introductions yeah. in terms of the journalists we have here. So we have Stuart from IoT Australia. We have Poppy from the Fifth Estate. William from IoT Hub. And Alex from IT Wire. So I will actually hand it over to Wayne, who's yep. going to do a small introduction, and then I'll just keep directing on the guys through. Okay, terrific. Well, welcome to Honeywell User Group 2019. This is an event that we're very, very proud of, and um, it kicked off here in Australia uh, in 2014. In fact, it was our first uh, Honeywell User Group. Started off with about 14 uh, customers that attended and helped us uh, kick off that inaugural uh, user group. We now got uh, 360, uh, 265 here this year, um, so which is a you know, pretty, pretty good evolution over the five years. And this is our uh, customer um, innovation centre. So this is where we showcase all our latest technology and walk our customers through and do live demonstrations with, with our customers to uh, help them roadmap their, their own technology. So my role is the uh, general manager for our service organisation within Asia Pacific. I'll introduce you to David Trice, who's our um, Vice President General Manager for Connected Buildings for our Honeywell Connected Enterprise. We've got Meryl Seek, who's um, our um, Director for Cyber Security for HBS and uh, Global. And then we've got uh, Himanshu, who's our Technology Leader across uh, HBS or team. And, uh, and then Paul Minkle, who's our um, uh, EBI uh, Product uh, Leader. And, uh, and on that note, we'll probably uh, walk you around. Yeah, we're actually going to hand over to Himanshu, who's just going to talk through a couple of the key launches that have been had, a bit of an overview, and then we'll actually go through. Okay. Hi, welcome. My name is Himanshu Kurana. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Honeywell Building Solutions. Uh, this is a very important event for us globally. We launch uh, Honeywell Users Group. Uh, we bring a lot of our customers here, and we have the Connected Innovation Center, the room that you're in, where we are launching some of our new capabilities and offerings. We've got three key launches. First, we are launching the new versions of our integrated operations portfolio of offerings. That's Enterprise Buildings Integrated 600, Digital Video Manager version 700, and Command Control Suite version 300. Built on open IoT technologies, with data and connectivity at their core, these offerings enable a better user experience, better operational outcomes, scalability, and easily allow our customers to manage complex operations. Second, we know cybersecurity is a key concern for our customers, so we are launching a suite or a portfolio of cybersecurity offerings here, and we focus on the full life cycle from assessment to remediation, remote management, and incident response should something go wrong. So we have uh, more on that uh, from our colleague Meryl Sahik in a few minutes. And third, we are launching the Honeywell Force for Buildings platform. With leveraging data, connectivity, and analytics, the platform allows us to create new capabilities and to solve very challenging problems from uh, predictive maintenance to occupant experience space utilization. And in fact, both of the previous launches I mentioned, both in connected operation, in integrated operations and for cybersecurity, are enabled by the Forge platform. And my colleague David Trice will talk a little bit more about Forge, Honeywell Forge for Buildings in a minute. Thank you. different technology sections. So first up, we've got Paul talking to integrated operations. So feel free to dodge the tables and, dodge come the table and go through. I haven't heard any questions yet, so feel free. Now it feels like I want to perform for the camera, so I'll try to avoid doing that and talk sure. to all of you. Um, Paul Beekle, EBI Global Product Manager. Um, this is essentially the 10th major release of our platform over the last 20 years. We started out doing BMS jobs in Australia. We've evolved that to doing integrated BMS jobs around the globe. To, um, I don't want to use too many numbers. We've got about 30,000 projects around the world, 150 million IoT devices connected into this platform. And you can see the evolution of it here uh, with the new releases that have just been launched. Mark sitting on our EBI console where we're bringing video graphic displays into this new integrated platform and the point of it is the same platform is running on here but we've got it configured primarily around surveillance and cameras 
but it's the same software platform. Uh, we can move it around BMS, chillers and boilers. These are all live graphic displays. We actively manage what on that instance is 10 content windows from within the EBI platform. In this instance, it's about seven content windows. And as you walk around this afternoon, have a look at all the vertical presentations. We specifically focus on healthcare, critical government infrastructure, smart precincts, and each of them are being hosted from the same single EBI core platform. One system driving all those vertical presentations. We don't have many customers who run seven different verticals, uh, but of course we need to demonstrate that to all the customers who are here for the Honeywell Users Group. In terms of benefits or what we've done in the newest release, it's around scalability and performance. Yes, it is a bit of hygiene around tech refresh, latest versions of Windows and SQL Server. Um, but the scalability item is, of course, designed around the increased number of devices that we're connecting, that customers are connecting into their systems. That, of course, blends into the need to do it safely, reply analytics, and uh, ultimately uh, optimise the whole portfolio of buildings, which is the story we're telling throughout this afternoon with you. Um, the, if you look at the systems, these are all running on-premise, to our traditional BMS platforms running in a building or in a precinct. Um, but this last item, EBI hosted in the cloud, if I could hit that refresh button. I'm gonna do it, because I know I've got one or two minutes. Uh, this is EBI hosted in the cloud. Uh, we take that platform that's traditionally in the basement or in the data center of the customer, we move it up to the cloud and that allows us to remove some of the burden of managing the cyber security, the uh, updates and patches, and we move it into our presence, host it in Azure. But the whole story builds as you go down. Merrill will talk to you soon about cyber security and what we're doing with our on-premise solutions, as well as with our cloud-hosted solutions. Today, we're not proposing, the architecture allows us to do anything. Security, it allows us technically to do fire, but it's going to be a long time before the UL standards around the world allows fire systems to be managed from a cloud-hosted system. So we're aware of that. We're targeting BMS first, building management systems, hosted in the cloud, because that's lighter weight. If something does occur with that connection to the building, uh, a bit like some issues that happened in Australia two weeks ago with internet connections, etc. If something does happen, of course, the building is self-contained. The controllers are there making decisions in real time. The cloud-hosted option allows you to scale the system much greater. And of course, we can help protect that system uh, much more securely compared to traditional systems. Okay. Uh, numbers of uh, data points. Uh, so in terms of scalability, I know it's one of the key points we highlighted with you, scalability. We've moved forward to 64-bit versions of the databases, SQL Server, uh, of course, Windows Server is a 64-bit OS. So we've got much greater capacity to manage numbers of alarms, numbers of events, numbers of card holders. Um, that's, it's, it's uh, look, it's significantly higher. It's not an order of magnitude, but it's multiples of uh, improvements in performance. Essentially, that's good, We've got buildings getting bigger, there's more people, there's more density, but it also allows us to do more with one single server, one computer, whether it's a virtual machine, whether it's a physical machine, but much more on one box, uh, which ultimately lowers costs for deployment around the world. I can finish there. Any questions? We can leave them till the end, of course. Yes? Uh, so the cloud or across the cloud capability, um, how new is the cloud capability? Is this How? The launch of the cloud it's launched. Yeah. yeah, it's launched. We've got about 50 projects okay. in Europe yeah. where we've been doing it for two or three years. Yeah. We're now productizing that around the globe. Yeah. Um, and we're actually doing one or two security jobs inside our European business. They're a little bit ahead of us. We're, we're launching it here in Asia Pacific yeah. and, of course, in the Americas as well, extending it around the globe. Okay, I'll pass over. There's going to be a lot of cyber security with me now, so we can follow the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
I'm not sure if you can get me in the in the frame there. No problems. Oh, I know, I've just been said that. I can make the tripod high, but it's all right. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Welcome to the cybersecurity booth, cybersecurity stand. Uh, everything that we do all around us here today, and you'll see lots of innovation. None of it possible without having a cool grip, control, understanding of cybersecurity. And we've been doing, oh goodness, cybersecurity now for more than 25 years, I guess, for our products. So all of our products that we put out to market, cyber secure. We have great governance frameworks that we buy by. I mean, it's core to our operating model. What we're now doing is we're extending that to the whole environment. So Honeywell, as you see here, uh, we operate many different environments, as Amanchu said, as Paul has said, lots of different verticals. So we're gonna make sure across those different verticals, across those different segments, that we keep those environments secure. We might have Honeywell systems. Great, I hope they're all Honeywell systems. Uh, there also might be a lot of third party systems on there. So we make sure to start and provide a life cycle approach to how we secure those environments holistically. A lot of our customers, some of them are more mature in aspects, they know what they want. If I could rate cyber security from zero to five, they might be at three or four. They say, we need this, we've done our assessments, we're good to go, we need some products. Fantastic, we can help. But now, some other customers, they're just starting out on the journey. Cybersecurity, as we know, big topic, right? For me, I think a very sexy topic. I mean, cybersecurity is, is excellent, it's a driver of change, it makes us think about things a lot differently. So for those customers that are just starting out, I want to demystify cybersecurity as a whole. That's the idea. So we start with a life cycle approach. We start with an assessment, I'm just pointing to this nice, elegant diagram here that we have underneath the screen. We start with an assessment to showcase to our customers, hey, maybe on the operational technology side of your environment, you may not have thought about these things. How do we lock things down? How do we you know, we're connecting things to the cloud. How do we make sure they're secure? Let's do an assessment to find out. Typically, we've done assessments on the IT side. Now, we're focusing more on the OT side. We then have some fantastic recommendations that come out of that, and we move through this life cycle approach. So, one of those being secure configuration. Let's bolt things down. Let's make sure the things shouldn't be running on our operating systems, for example, that don't need to be uh, running for, for our effective operations of our applications, let's lock them down. We now have some fantastic appliances and software, two of which you see here. Up here, we've got our fantastic partner solution. Uh, we call it Honeywell Advanced Endpoint Security. It's basically uh, next generation on top of next generation, so it uses deep learning principles, not just machine learning, uh, to basically detect threats. So we have a very good model which we subscribe to, which is prevention first. So we don't want to, we want to prevent, stop as much as we can. And we do that by, by partnering with our best in class solution providers. Another solution or another problem uh, that comes up all too often is around USB. How do we stop threats from USB? Now typically, you turn your USB ports off. It means, how do we get that work done, right? So we've got a homegrown solution uh, that's been born out of our industrial side of our business that have been doing cyber security for quite a while, uh, making sure that they protect all these movable processes that we have. So chemical processing, refining, all gas, so on and so forth. Take our USBs and make sure we pass it through uh, this device here, which sits out of bound on the network. You have to sit on your operational technology network. We go through and we vet every USB that gets put on site. This then makes sure this USB is locked down. All the files that can be and should be used in your environment are then coded with a key. And then you can go ahead and use it in your environment. It acts as an arbitrage device, which is a fantastic way to make sure you've got operational continuity 
plus also keeping your area secure. A little bit about appliances and software. Again, we want to make sure we solve our customers' challenges. So not everything will come down to these two appliances. We've done some assessments. Great. That's a line in the sand. Right? Tomorrow, things could change. So we want to make sure we've got eyes on the prize, eyes in our operating environment. For that, we'll do cyber security monitoring. Right? So again, our operational technology environments a very new concept, new term. The blending of IT and OT gives us IoT, right? Allows us to have all these great insights. We want to make sure we've got our eyes on that operational technology environment. So some great solutions to do that. We then move through. In cybersecurity, nothing bulletproof, right? So to make sure that we've got best in breed protection, our layers stack it on top of each other, incident readiness and response is key. If something does happen, how do we respond? Who responds? The Honeywell. And the customer is a joint collaboration, in which case it should be. Let's prepare for that. If an incident occurs, let's get out there, make sure we respond, make sure we do so correctly, make sure the right people are involved to minimise any potential fallout, and of course, get our customers operating once again. Finally, proactive maintenance, the life cycle approach. I say cybersecurity is sexy because it's forever changing. And we're going to make sure we're doing all these things and make sure we're keeping uh, and upkeeping with new technology, new standards within our environments. Any questions? Do you use any third party products in your security portfolio or your homegrown email products? No, but one of the things that we're trying to really actively encourage. Uh, is partnering, and you'll hear this a lot if you stick around, is actively encourage partnering with certain uh, best in breed vendors. So yes, absolutely we do. And we make sure those uh, vendors are put through, uh, trials, tests, so on and so forth, to make sure that they work within our environments, and make sure, again, that we don't disrupt our customer operations. So is it more on a project per project basis, you look at what customer needs, and you pick a third party product, when you create with yours, and you have a certain set number of uh, third party companies and products that you, you know, have there as part of your portfolio? So we, we try heavily, we've got a big, big customer base. Mm. So we try heavily to standardize on the way mm. we go to market with a lot of our solutions. Mm. So we wouldn't be doing and being uh, wise to make sure we have, a, you know, we don't want to have a hundred solutions no. basically. So we make sure a lot of the problems our customers have are very similar. Mm. Might have a problem in China, mm. problem in uh, Canada, mm. problem in parts mm. of Brazil. It might be very similar. Mm. So we make sure we have the same solution provider or same solution set to solve these challenges. It's mm. a good question. Any other questions? All right, we have to move on. Jan's telling me we have to move on. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Excellent, thank you. So again, David Trice, uh, General Manager of uh, Honeywell Connected Buildings. Uh, Honeywell Forge is a platform that we're launching that uh, is focused on taking uh, advantage of all of the great things that we've been doing in a single building for years and adding scale to it. So that is, in fact, uh, the, the, the core solution that we're providing is one of scale. Our customers are generally coming to us today and saying, I like what you've done in a single building, but I actually own a hundred buildings or a thousand buildings, and in some cases, 10,000 buildings. I need to be able to apply all of the great capabilities that you've given to me at scale. Help me manage my portfolio in a way that I can't do today uh, in order to drive business transformation. And so the middle image around business transformation or for many of our customers is I want to run my portfolio. Again, think a thousand buildings. I'd like to do that from my favorite coffee shop. Right? So all of the things that we've talked about that you've heard about so far this morning, I need to be able to do from a single location with a single, with a single click into a single platform that gives me the ability to control a building in the same location that I'm at or somewhere on the other side of the world. Right? And so that's the core problem. The strategic imperatives that we're hearing from our customers along these lines are, are pretty simple. Uh, help me create a lean operation. Uh, the buildings have been run the same way for years. There's a lot of labor associated with it. How can I automate that? And how can I take that automation and drive it across all of my buildings? 
uh, how can I take uh, the, the security that we have been installing in buildings for years and evolve it from building-oriented security to individual security within the building? Because with all of the things that are happening in the world today, the individual as an asset and the protection of that asset is growing significantly in, in, uh, in the concern of our, our building portfolio owners. And then lastly, they're saying, um, and importantly, I, I need to do all of this without any additional capital investment. From the, from the assets that I've already put in place and the infrastructure that I've already put in place, bring to me a platform that I can put on top that allows me to do all this without any additional spend. So a pretty big challenge, right? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one to think about when you think about uh, all of the variety of systems that we might see inside of a portfolio. Again, think a thousand buildings. We have to walk into that customer assuming that we see one of everything. All of our third party uh, um, uh, providers that are out there, uh, uh, many homegrown systems. Uh, we have many um, um, uh, Honeywell systems and various flavors of Honeywell systems that exist. And we have to have a single way to connect to all of them, not only to get the data out of the building to drive the insights, but also to push the decisions back into the building to drive the control. So that's what Honeywell Forge is all about. It's about taking the, all of that infrastructure, providing access to it through a common interface that we refer to as connectivity as a service, it is our single interface to a single building that gives us a common way to see data, interact with data, and drive decisions back. And then we build on top of that applications. And here's some examples of, of some of those applications uh, that we're, we've, we've launched uh, here this summer. Uh, we, we focus on, on a few key areas, predictive maintenance, digital access, spatialization, and portfolio management. And what you're seeing here on the screen are just a couple of examples of how we think about portfolio op optimization. And so if you look here, you know, we, this is an example where I've got 55 sites that are uh, under management, and I've taken the data across maintenance, across energy, across utilization, across cyber, and aggregated that up into a single dashboard that a COO or somebody at that level might be able to see how his, his portfolio is performing. We've got a way to normalize performance into a score so that I can see on a relative scale how my buildings compare to each other. And then where, where, based on that score, where do I need to make investment decisions? And if perhaps it happens to be uh, in, a, in a comfort uh, or HVAC kind of discussion, I can drill down into the, the core performers and I can see where I can make those investments that will ultimately drive the score up for that building as well as for the portfolio as a whole. So those are the kinds of insights that we're looking to drive for, for our customers, and it, which will enable them to, to, to transform their business with a different set of tools and a different set of, set of capabilities to run their buildings in ways that they've, uh, they've never really done before. So you probably are wondering, what's the impact, right? We've actually proven in a number of our earlier customers that we're seeing as much as a 25% impact on OPEX spend it's dri driven right to the bottom line by putting these tools in place. We're getting tremendous bit of impact from predictive maintenance, from energy optimization, from the, the impacts of utilization on our businesses, and delivering bottom line impact to our customers, which enable them to fund the thinking and the thought process around digital transformation as a whole. That's what Honeywell Forge is all about, and the solutions that we're providing today are really helping our customers think differently about the way they run their business. Any questions? So those performance increases, are those obtained primarily because with this tool, people can compare on, on all sorts of different parameters. A good performing building with a poorly performing building. Yeah. Say, what's the difference there? It's, a, it's it a great better. question. Um, and, and I will tell you that a number of our customers are really coming to the, uh, to the point of view of understanding that there's low hanging fruit, mm. that if I can apply the consistent process across mm. a large number of buildings, I have a dramatic impact as a result. Mm. And being able to see the performance as you're describing is exactly the starting point for understanding where to drive improvements across mm. the portfolio. Else? I was just wondering if we work is using any of your systems in, in all the, in the buildings that it been reading about them recently and all sorts of weird yeah, stuff. Yeah, you know, it's it's a great question. I will tell you that uh, um, without going into discussion of a specific customer, the the layers of the platform that I described, we have three primary layers: connectivity as a service, which is the common interface to a building; mm -hmm. the API layer, which is a common integration framework, as Mural described earlier. We expect partners to, to integrate into the building as well. We, we know that we're not going to be able to deliver 100% of the capability for all of our customers. So we've got an API layer that we expose and that we use to build our own apps on top. The various layers provide choice to our customers. 
that means that we have a broad customer base and can provide value to a variety of customers that might want to take advantage of the components along the way. <coughs> I mean, the, this is turning buildings into smart buildings. So, you know, when people have older buildings, how obviously it's different for every building. I mean, with a TV, you just buy an Apple TV or a Roku box. But, you know, what's the an average cost for someone to upgrade their building into a smart building? And I, and I openly realize that it's uh, different, different for every it, building. It is. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a bit of a sliding scale. Yeah. But you've actually answered the question for me. The Roku example is a phenomenal uh, analog to our connectivity mm -hmm. solution. Uh, our connectivity as a service solution is an appliance that we take to a building and set on top of their existing infrastructure, a BMS or whatever might be in place in the building, mm -hmm. or whether they've already invested in smart controllers and you need to have just a more efficient way to aggregate the data. Um, if in fact that's all that's needed and there's not any additional plumbing or hardware or, or infrastructure that's needed, that actually is a part of a subscription. And so we don't have to, to invest in laying cables and wires and things of that nature, which is where we start to drive the benefit. Now I've got a common way to, to, to put my Roku box in the building and then connect it accordingly to, to the infrastructure that drives the decisions. And I'm uh, imagining that a lot of buildings, especially if they're older, probably would have been upgraded to some degree over the years. But, uh, you know, instead of getting an old building and then running cables all the way through it, I mean, is it possible to have devices that are wireless that talk to other parts that may be wired, but you know, you minimize that impact. Yeah, great, great dis discussion. In fact, you, if you kind of turn around and, and look on some of the walls there, you'll see a number of edge devices that are doing exactly what you're describing. Yeah. That is a direction that most, many of our customers are going. Rather than going through the, the infrastructure investment to put a new BMS in place and do all the wiring, they're putting controllers on the asset itself that have the ability to communicate in a variety of ways directly to the cloud. Um, we, we see that often. Our connectivity as a service we're using as a throttle point to take and aggregate the data and, and make decisions on site and then, and then use the cloud for the heavier lifting of the aggregated data when need be. So that's a, a very common uh, use case that we get involved in. Uh, and I think that is, in fact, where the world's going over time. I think in a, in a number of years we'll find ourselves uh, really thinking and looking back on um, kind of the evolution and seeing many smart controllers uh, really kind of driving the day. And that'll give us an opportunity to do some really new innovative things with the, with the infrastructure and the building itself. I think customers see cost and return on the investment that they make. And for us, we provide a variety of solutions at the hardware level and at the software level. Yeah. So the customers have a choice on how they want to manage that technology upgrade lifecycle of their systems, how they deploy new applications and get benefit from it. Some of it will be able to do just by learning software. Other benefits come when you're able to upgrade uh, some subset of the hardware and now with modern solutions and modern technologies, even the hardware upgrades have new enhancements. Uh, it's not just the software. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Mm -hmm. With that, you can have an opportunity to walk around, have a look at the different stands, get some photos. If there were any speakers or any areas that you really have an interest in, you'd like to dive a bit into a bit more. Just let one of us know and we can connect you with anything else.